Welcome to another episode of Investing RX and a big congratulations to all the new interns. I know it's an incredible, exciting, stressful year, but a big milestone and you're that much closer to the finish line. Now, if you remember way back when I first started a section of my channel, it was because I made USMLE videos for my students who are now either all starting or about to start residency. And there wasn't anything else board related I could teach them. So instead of that, I wanted to teach them something else. And that something else was the importance of personal finance. Because you're finally getting paid and you want to manage your money well. Because if not, that's just another huge stressor in your life. That's not really what you want right now. And there was a simple checklist that I went over that if you did it, really put you in the top 1% of people that really manage their finances well. And now that you're finished with your onboarding process, hopefully, and getting your first paycheck, it helps to go over it again. And this is what we're going to call the new intern checklist. So here it is, this lovely page on Reddit, and I'll link it in the description below. And it outlines the steps of personal finance, and they call it the prime directive. And the first step is to create a budget. It's the fundamentals. It's very important when you're just starting out, you have new rent payments, maybe you got a new car lease, maybe you stopped paying for daycare. It's not static, it's dynamic, and it'll definitely change over the next few months, but it's important just to track your ins and outs, your monthly I's and O's. See if you're net negative or net positive. And you can use Excel, uh, I'll link a spreadsheet, a spreadsheet that I like, this one right here. Uh, another big tip is just to be as detailed as possible. Just like charting a patient's ins and out. You want to break it down, right? You don't just say, oh, the patient took in 1.5 liters and that's it. You should know what they took in, how much they took in, say 300 by mouth, 200 from medication, 1 liter from IV fluid, etc. Well, here is the same. Instead of just saying car payment, say the gas for my car, car insurance, car maintenance, etc. So that is your first step. So that is step zero. Now, step one, you got your budget, you're getting your regular paycheck, and hopefully it's more than your expenses. What now? What to do with the leftovers? And the first thing to do with the leftovers is to build in what they call an emergency fund. This is to cover three to six months of basic expenses. That's housing and food. It's an emergency fund. You want to cut out some quote unquote luxuries like Netflix, eating out, all that stuff. Saving this may take some time, but it's an extremely important thing to do. And remember what happened, I mean, even this year, so many people were completely turned upside down. You don't want that to happen to you. Remember, many Americans are living paycheck to paycheck. And this news article by CNBC, most Americans can't afford a $400 unexpected or emergency bill. So you don't want to be in that situation where you can't afford an emergency bill. And this is a step that many people unfortunately skip, building in an emergency fund. But let's say you did that, you build your budget, you got your emergency fund, what to do now? Step two is employer-sponsored matching funds. What does that mean? Hopefully you had orientation with human resources, HR, about what kind of retirement accounts they might offer. Do they have a 401k? Do they have a 403, 457? All these numbers, what do they mean? If you don't know, just ask ask what they have and most importantly if they match now matching which is a stressful word for all of us uh, some employers incentivize their employees to save for retirement so they will match a certain amount of what you contribute for example if my employer matches three percent of my salary that i contribute to my 401k if i make a hundred thousand dollars which i don't but it's a nice round number and i put in three percent of that or three thousand dollars they will match that and they will give me an extra $3,000. That's free money. And that's why that's the next step. That's why it's so high up on the list because it's free money. So if you have a 401k that matches, contribute as much as you can up to that maximum matching limit. And for my example, it would be $3,000. If your employer doesn't have one or doesn't match, then you say, okay, we'll just move on to the next step. And the next step is to pay down high interest debts. This is really talking about credit card debt or some people might have a personal loan with high interest you want to pay this off pretty aggressively because it can eat into your budget and debt is just an awful burden to carry and there are certain methods people use to pay off debt one's the avalanche method which is tackling the debt with the highest interest rate and that kind of makes sense because the higher interest rate the more it's charging you so you want to take those down first and then once you take those down move on to the next one with the highest interest rate that's the avalanche method next method is the snowball method snowball method tackles the smallest debt that you have. It might be like a $50 credit card debt, whatever. You tackle that, don't even look at the interest rate, you just tackle it, 
clear off the list, gives you a nice incentive, a little, a little emotional boost, and then makes you ready to clear off the next smallest debt. That's the snowball method. Whichever method you choose, please just stick with it. Get rid of that high interest debt. Great. Let's move on to step four. Contribute to an IRA or an individual retirement account. Another retirement account? Yes. The more the merrier because it's good to have a retirement account with your employer, but it's also good to have one that you open and control individually. And that means no matter where you move or if you change employers or whatever, it's always there. You can open up one with the big three, which is Fidelity, Schwab, Vanguard. You can choose another company if you like. I chose Vanguard. It only takes a moment. You just plug in your personal information, your banking information, and boom, you're done. And you can contribute a maximum of $6,000 a year, which breaks down to about $500 a month. And you can set that automatically to, to pull it right after you get your paycheck. That way, it's, it's gone and you're not tempted to, to use that money elsewhere. That's step number four. And the next steps, step five, step six, is if you still have some money left over, it's just save more. Save a little bit more aggressively. One more vehicle that I like to discuss is an HSA or a, or a health savings account. This is not FSA, which I do not recommend. I know so many letters. It's probably why people hate learning about finance. It's just a jumble of letters, but it's kind of like med school. You just learn a ton of letters, acronyms, and you made it this far. So please stick with it. HSA is like a retirement account that grows and when you're older can be used for medical expenses, among other things, which is great. That's a concern many of us have when we're older. How are we going to pay for things if we get in real trouble or we need long-term care, stuff like that. One of the requirements to opening an HSA is that you have to have a high deductible healthcare plan. Those are those plans that young healthy people enroll in. Those are the plans that are really cheap, but you just have to pay more out of pocket if something does happen, knock on wood, that it doesn't happen. Those are the plans that many of us have. And if you do, you can open an HSA. Your employer may have one, or you may open up one yourself. I chose Fidelity. And you can contribute a maximum of 3550 a year which breaks down to about 300 a month. And that's it. Those are the steps. That is a ton of information. I'm sorry to just lay it all out there. It might take a while to absorb, go over the checklist a few times, read a little bit more in depth, but those are the basics. It's not a lot of steps, right? But those are the fundamentals. And if you get those fundamentals down, then you're in great shape. You're in a lot better shape than most Americans out there, including most doctors. You might be saying, can you give me a breakdown? Sure. Let's do a little example, a little mental exercise. We'll start with Mike, who just became a resident at University of Washington. Now, University of Washington pays him $3,500 a month. Great. And his benefits include a 401k with 3% match and an HSA. Awesome. So the first thing Mike does is what? The first thing he does is create a budget, right? That was step zero. That's ground zero. He's creating a budget and he finds out his expenses cost about $2,500 a month. That's, that's his rent, transportation, food. He budgeted eating out and Amazon and clothes and all that stuff. So it comes out about $2,500 a month. So he has about $1,000 left over. He knows he needs an emergency fund. That's step two. And when he calculates how much he needs for just bare essentials, so he's cutting out all the other luxuries, it comes out to about $2,000 a month. So times by three to six months, he chose three months, he needs to save about $6,000. So he puts some of his paycheck aside and saves for that. And he also has some money left over from his previous just bank account and he saves a total of $6,000. Great. Check that step off the list. He has an emergency fund. He feels good that if something does happen, knock on wood, it doesn't. He has some leeway, some protection. So he moves on to the next step, which is employer sponsored funds. So he asks his HR department, do you have a 401k? Do you match? He said, yes, we have a 401k with a 3% match. Great. He signs up and contributes 3% of his salary to the 401k, which automatically matches and gives him free money. How awesome is that? And the next step is paying off high interest debts. He has, he has two credit cards with debt on it. He has one that has $200 at 15%, one at $800 at 17%. He doesn't really know what method to use, so he flips a coin and he chooses a snowball method. And to be honest, tackling that $200 debt seems a lot easier than tackling the $800 debt. So he does that and over the next few months, pays them off. He now realizes the money he has left over has increased every month from $1,000 a month to $1,100 a month. And, and many people realize this after a few months of budgeting. So he's feeling pretty good about himself. Now he really wants to save a little bit more for retirement and investing and things like that. So he moves on to the next step, 
which is opening an IRA. So he opens an IRA with Vanguard. And again, he can contribute up to $6,000 a year or 500 a month. He sets an automatic deposit, so it withdraws right after his paycheck comes in. And now when he looks at his budget, his the money he has left over every month drops from 1100 to 600 He still wants to be aggressive and save more. He has a high deductible health care plan with University of Washington, so he decides to open an HSA with Fidelity. Recall, you can contribute a maximum of 3550 a year, or about 300 a month. So he does that, sets it automatically. And there are a lot of options of what to invest in. Feels a bit overwhelmed, so he invests a fund that tracks the U.S. market and calls it a day, promising to learn more about those funds later. So when he looks at his monthly budget, it is now decreased from 600 to 300 after his contributions to his HSA. So he has 300 bucks to save more elsewhere, do whatever. But those are the basic steps. And again, most Americans do not do these steps. So if you get these basic four or five steps down, you are really killing it. And the best thing is these steps are similar for most people in all walks of life. So you can take these steps with you. Remember, the last thing you need is just financial burdens and another stressor when you're starting residency. So again, congratulations to all the interns. Hope you enjoyed this video. Let me know where you are in this checklist in the comments below. If you enjoyed this video, hit like, subscribe. See you next time. Thanks. Bye.